Greetings and welcome to our study on Death's Doorway. That sounds a little bit gruesome, but let's take a look at it anyhow. Really what we want to address is what is behind Death's Doorway. Now most of us have been to the funeral of a loved one and we've heard different stories on where they went. So where are our loved ones? What happened to those who died and were buried? So and how can we be sure of the true answer? Well, the best one to answer this question is, of course, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the creator of the universe himself. I mean, who would be better positioned to know what it's all about than Jesus himself? So they asked him, when Jesus walked the earth, people were asking him, in Mark 12, 23, they said, Therefore, they're trying to trick him up because some of them believed in a resurrection of the dead and others didn't believe in a resurrection of the dead. And so they're trying to trip him up and they said, therefore, in the resurrection, when they arise, whose wife will she be? For all seven had her to wife. And you need to check Mark 12 for the full context there. But they're trying to trip Jesus into making a poor explanation. And he comes back in verse 25. And he says, for when they rise from the dead. Now, this is Jesus of Nazareth saying, when people rise from the dead. In specifics, these eight people, the wife and her seven husbands, not all at once. She, she had a husband and he died and another husband and he died and so on. You have to check it as in, as I said in Mark 12. Okay, so when they rise from the dead. That's Jesus saying, when people rise from the dead. They neither marry or are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. Now, Luke gives some more details in Luke 20, verse 35. And it says, Jesus speaking, But those who are counted worthy to attain that age and the resurrection from the dead, neither marry or are given in marriage. So what is he saying? He's saying those who are counted worthy, that's an important little piece, to attain that age and the resurrection from the dead. This is Jesus talking, so we should believe what Jesus says. They will be dead in their graves until the resurrection, is what Jesus is saying. Jesus continues, Luke 20, verse 36. Nor can they die anymore because they're in the resurrection from the dead. They have spirit being bodies like angels. Nor can they die anymore for they are equal to the angels. They have an angelic body and they are sons of God being sons, sons and daughters of the resurrection. So they died. They went into the graves. At the time of the first resurrection, they came out of their graves. They were given a spirit being body. And now they're sons of God being the sons and daughters of the resurrection. Now, after being dead, they will be resurrected to life again, which makes them, like it says, sons, sons and daughters of the resurrection. So Jesus has said in two places now, the dead are to be resurrected to life again at a future time. Now, Jesus will tell us where the good and the evil are at this present time while they are waiting for one of the two resurrections. We see that in John 5 verse 28. John 5 verse 28. For the hour is coming when all who are in the graves will hear his voice. Okay? Where are all of these people? They're in the graves. Now, what do people tell you? People are saying, no, nobody's in the graves, essentially. That, that an instant you die, if you're a Jesus person, you went straight to heaven and you're still alive in heaven. If you weren't a Jesus person, you went straight to hell and you're alive in hell. And there's no talk of anybody being in the graves. But here's Jesus saying, for the hour is coming in which all who are in the graves, where? In the graves, will hear his voice. In the, in the graves, they'll hear his voice. Verse 29, and come forth. They'll come out of the graves. Those who have done good, Okay, this is group A, to the resurrection of life. That's the name given to the first resurrection, the resurrection of life. And those who have done evil 
Okay, a lot of people are thinking, ah, those who've done evil, they went straight to hell. No, he's saying they're going to come out of the graves when they hear his voice at the appropriate time. Those who have done evil, group B, to the resurrection of condemnation. Or, most everybody's heard of Judgment Day. That's what that is. It's Judgment Day. It's the second resurrection. It's where people resurrected to condemnation for all of their failings and shortcomings and so on. Next we see Jesus telling the Apostle John in, in the book of Revelation when the two resurrections will be. Revelation 20 verse 4, Then I saw souls and those of those who had been beheaded. So they were dead. <laughs> They'd been beheaded and they were dead for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God who had not worshipped the beast or his image and they lived and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. So they were dead. They had their heads cut off. They were obviously dead. And when he called them out of the graves, they became alive again. This is the first resurrection. And verse 5 of Re uh, Revelation 20. But the rest of the dead did not live again until the thousand years were finished. So the first resurrection called out of the graves at the beginning of the, of the uh, thousand year period. Right? And so what do we learn from this verse? We learn that death means not living. Now let's read it again. Revelation 20 verse 5. The rest of the dead, the rest of the dead people, the rest of the dead people who are in their graves, did not live again. So Bible use of this term dead means not living. Now a lot of people will try to tell you, many Bible teachers try to tell you, that dead in the Bible means separated from God but still alive. Um, you know, if, if you're dead, they, they say you're separated from God but you're still alive in hell. And, and if, I guess, so, so they get it mixed up and twisted around, but we need to just focus on what is it that Jesus said, and this is what he said, the rest of the dead. So the first resurrection raises the first group, those who have done good in the first resurrection, they come back to life and live with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead, all those other people who are going to come up in the resurrection of condemnation, the rest of the dead, those people, did not live again until the thousand years were finished. So that's plain language, but if you don't want to read that verse, if you want to skip over that verse, if you just want to listen to somebody tell you how sweet it is or how bad people went to hell and they've been down there suffering and being tortured all this time. But, but you have to look to what Jesus said, not to what people said. So, verse 20, verse 6. I mean, it's Revelation 20, verse 6. Blessed and holy uh, is he who has part in the first resurrection, obviously, because he's going to get an angelic body. He's going to get a spirit being body. He's going to live with Christ and reign with Christ for a thousand years, and he can never taste of death for the rest of this verse. Over such, over these people in the first resurrection, the second death has no power, and they shall be priests of God and of Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. So the first resurrection at the beginning of the thousand year reign of Christ on planet Earth, bringing peace and prosperity and, and just abundance to planet Earth, and the others at the end of the thousand years at Judgment Day at the Second Resurrection. Now all Christians should want and believe this promise. This is what Jesus said. This is what we should be aiming at, focus on, and believing he said it, and therefore living that way. Billions have been taught that Jesus says Christians go to heaven when they die. But Jesus actually said, no one goes to heaven. And you just go look at the scripture, John 3, 11. Most assuredly, I say, we speak what we know of and testify what we have seen, and you do not receive our witness. And that's happening today. People are not receiving the written biblical witness from Jesus. Verse 12, if I have told you earthly things and you don't believe, how will you believe if I tell you heavenly things, says Jesus. And the very next verse, verse 13, says, No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man, i.e. Jesus, who is in heaven. Why don't people believe the words of Jesus? It's, it's really amazing, it's shocking, it's horrifying in one sense. They, because Jesus tells us why in Matthew 24, verse 5. For many will come in my name, 
and he preaching, teaching in the name of Jesus, saying, I am the Christ, which is true. Jesus is the Christ, the Messiah, that's true. And they will deceive many. So many of the preachers about Jesus will trick or deceive many people. Matthew 24, verse 11. Then many false prophets, many false teachers will rise up and deceive many. They'll be tricking people. Jesus says many people will be tricked by the false Jesus preachers. Again, we see in Mark 13, verse 6, For many will come in my name, saying, I am he, meaning I am he, the Christ, the Messiah, and they will deceive many. So you can't just trust, you can't just rely on the fact that somebody preaches Jesus. You have to know what your Bible says. Jesus tells his followers not to be deceived, not to be deceived in Luke 21, verse 8. And he said, Jesus speaking, take heed okay what is he saying there he's saying take heed it's your job it's your responsibility to be sure that you are not being deceived and all you have to do is pick up your bible and look at some of these scriptures i've mentioned here and the general traditional christian teaching in the world is the opposite of what's being taught in your bible in those scriptures but but the preachers and the teachers who are tricking people, they skate by them or, or around them or they say, dead just means separated from God. No, it doesn't. Dead means not living. That's what dead means, biblically speaking. For many will come in my name saying, I am he. So he's saying, you have to take heed. In Matthew 24, he said, let no one deceive you. That's your job. Okay, we must take heed and, the, and only believe the true words of Jesus. Now, while we have Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, words in red, we have what Jesus said, we have to focus on what Jesus said, we have to believe what Jesus said. John 14, 23, Jesus said, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word. He'll follow what I said. Verse 24 is the opposite. He who does not love me. We've got to, we've got to read this slow. He who does not love love me, Jesus Christ, does not keep my words, or doesn't agree with my words, or doesn't believe my words. Same problem he had, same problem he had 2,000 years ago, is extant today, just as it has been for 2,000 years. So Jesus teaches that dead people are not going to live again until the first or second resurrection. In Hebrews 6, it shows the six basic doctrines of Jesus Christ. Hebrews 6.1 Therefore, leaving the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ. So what are we talking about here in Hebrews 6.1? The elementary principles of Jesus Christ. Let us go on to perfection, to full maturity, not laying again the foundation. What? The foundation? What? What's that? the founding basic bedrock doctrines that you have to believe if you're going to follow Jesus and going to understand the rest of the salvation process. So what is this foundation? He continues in verse 1. Foundation of repentance from dead works, that's 1. And of faith towards God, that's 2. Verse 2 of Hebrews 6. And of the doctrine of baptism, that's 3. And of laying on of hands, that's 4. And the resurrection of the dead, that's number five. And the sixth one is, and of eternal judgment. So you, the founding doctrine, doctrines, beliefs include, number five, the resurrection of the dead, which we've been talking about here. And people just get it twisted all around. Essentially, they deny that there are any dead people. So what, if there are no dead people, you don't need any resurrections, because they either went to heaven or they went to hell, which is not true. So Jesus gives us six basic foundational doctrines to believe. So we must believe him and believe his doctrine of the resurrection of dead people. 